Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. Light in darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is morning, and the day is just beginning. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your Morning. We once again light our Advent wreath. We've already lit, and lit the candles of peace, hope, and today we celebrate joy. Joy at the coming of Christ, our Messiah, the one come to save us. Joy at recognizing that God will soon, once again, change the world. Now together let us sing, light one candle.
Gospel according to Isaiah. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and re release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. Foreigners shall till your land and dress your vines. But you shall be called priests of the Lord. You shall be named ministers of our God. You shall enjoy the wealth of the nations in their riches, and you shall glory. Because their shame was double, and dishonor was proclaimed as their lot, therefore they shall possess a double portion. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. For I, the Lord of the justice, I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our passage from Isaiah this morning is really all about the restoration of Israel. The restoration after the Babylonian captivity. They're coming back to their home. It's finally being restored to them. This is what it means when it's talking about the, the ruins being built back up. They're going to rebuild the temple and the, and the walls of Jerusalem. They're going to restore all that was lost when Babylon came and invaded their city, their country. It's a, a time of great joy, of promise. And of course, it, it becomes wrapped up with the story of the Messiah, the Messiah who will come and truly restore all of their fortunes, make Israel the nation God intended them to be, a nation that is a light to the world, teaching them the ways of balance, of justice, of mercy, of restoration. It's also about jubilee. All of the themes within this passage are about that year of jubilee. Jubilee is every 50 years all debts are forgiven, all prisoners are let free, all captives are made free, all land is returned to its ancestral home. Everything is restored. This is a promise within scripture that is reiterated time and time again. It is a message of joy and hope, one that resonates for many of us today. Because it's not just an Old Testament promise, but a New Testament promise as well. Jesus, when he begins his ministry in the Gospel of Luke, says, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And he is talking about this one, about the promise of jubilee, about restoration and forgiveness and recompense. That all people might have enough, that no one will have too little or too much. It goes both ways. That's what justice does. It affects those people at the top and at the bottom. This is why sometimes I say the gospel is not necessarily good news to everyone. Because if you're at the top of the heap, it means you got to share. But if you're at the bottom, you will finally have enough. And I know today people, many people, they don't have enough. They struggle, they work, they work multiple jobs just to survive. And sometimes it's still not enough. There's a lot of 
Well, there's a lot of injustice in the world. We see it. We see those people struggling. We see them scraping by, sometimes failing, sometimes ending up on the street. We have so many people who are homeless these days, so many people that can't survive in the system that we have set up. And unfortunately, we just don't hear enough about that situation. They fall through the cracks. They don't get the time in the news because there are so many other pressing things going on. But people are struggling. Too many people don't have enough. I was having a, a conversation with folks in our synod this last week, as we often do. And this also comes off of our synod assembly just a few weeks ago. Our, if you're unaware, our synod is uh, the state organization. And the ELCA, the Evangelical Lutheran Church, is our national organization for all of the Lutheran churches that are connected, that we strive to do things together, to be supportive of one another, to make change in the world as a body. And one of the changes we are striving to make is to recognize that Sometimes we've been at the top of the heap. Sometimes we have not done our part to make sure people have had enough. And right now we're struggling to recognize our Native American brothers and sisters. It's a challenge. Because honestly right now is not a time of great abundance for the church. We're struggling nationally. All churches are struggling in one way or another. But we're still talking about restoration. So restoration for those brothers and sisters that have lost far more than we can even imagine. And it's just the beginning of those talks of what some sort of reparations might look like. And I know it's not just our denomination that's having this discussion. Many are because we recognize that for too long they have always taken a back seat. Now, when I grew up in the greater Portland area, of course, we heard stories about the Native American tribes that were here before us. Many stories, many of them good and beautiful stories. Sometimes, well, more often tragic, right? There's, of course... Pocahontas and Lewis and Clark and all of the tribes that helped them in their journey across to the west. There was Chief Joseph, right? We all heard that story growing up. And many other local tribes, right? And they were often told with respect, but no one ever said anything about giving them back what we took. Moving here to Pendleton, it's become a little more real for me because we've got the Umatilla tribes right next door. They're our neighbors. And that's a beautiful thing. I've only, real. Well, I've only really just begun to have a few conversations with those folks, but like, you can't ignore the reality. The reality that this church probably stands on land that used to belong to tribes. This area was an important hub for many tribes in the region. But here we are, my own house, my own church, this whole community which I love so much. This wasn't our land. And yeah, I know it's messy. I know it's complicated. Nothing about it is simple. And that's not, I'm not trying to boil it down to anything simple. The flip of a switch, it's not going to work like that. But we have to understand that when we listen to the promises of God's restoration, sometimes that means we are going to be the ones who have to give something up. If we are the ones that have things that do not belong to us, that are unfair, if we are the unjust oppressors, then God's justice, God's mercy, God's gift of balance and hope for the future means maybe, well, maybe we were wrong. Maybe we made a mistake. Maybe it was our ancestors. Maybe we didn't have anything to do with it. It doesn't matter. Because this promise, this gift of jubilee means everything turns on its head. If we heard the story that Mary sang, the, the mighty will be tor torn down and the lowly will be lifted up. This is a promise, a hope, a vision of the future that God and Christ reiterates time and time again. The last will be first and the first will be last. This is not idle talk. This is not pie in the sky. This is what God will be doing for all of us. And yes, I know each of us has had injustices done to us. We've been taken advantage of. We've not been cared for in the way that we should have. And so, yes, we too will understand restoration. When we receive, we will also give. And that will go for all people. And yes, this is a Sunday of joy where we hear with joy the message of this turning, this renewal, this rebalancing of the world. We're going to have to give, we're going to have to take, we're going to receive. All of these things will be changed and it'll be hard and scary, but beautiful. The joy God promises because of this restoration will be everlasting. The gospel is hard 
That's just the reality. It's a simple idea. Be saved. Share. Give. Make sure everyone has enough. It's a very simple idea. I sometimes joke that every Sunday I preach about the exact same thing, just with a few different words, and in some ways that's true. But that's because even though it's a simple idea, it's deeply challenging to live out. To be the people who have integrity in what we speak and in what we believe. To, to take those steps to restore the injustices that we have been a part of. That's what God asks us to do. And we have to live into that. We have to live up to that. But you know what I keep coming back to? Even though I'm a little uncomfortable by this conversation, I'm a little uncomfortable about the ideas that that means and what that portrays. I am warmed by the idea that if we can all do this, if we can all live into it, accept it as real and true and recognize that God wants this for us for all of our joy, I am uplifted. My spirit is restored because there is injustice everywhere. But it doesn't have to be in us. It doesn't have to be in what we do or who we are. We can be the nation God calls us to be. We can be that light to other people, showing them the type of God we have and the type of world God wants for all of us. This Advent season has traditionally been a time of preparing, preparing for the coming of Christ. And I ask you to, add, to, to look at yourselves, to look at your lives and, and wonder, what is it you need to prepare for? Is it a restoration of what was taken from you? Or is the sharing of all that's been given to you? I know for me, it's some of each. And I'm hopeful because of it. Amen. Let's pray. Stir up the, the wills of your people your faithful, of your faithful people, Lord God. And open our ears to the words of your prophets, that, anointed by your Spirit, we may testify to your light, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I have a, a couple of announcements. The first one, of course, is that we will be having our council meeting tomorrow night via Zoom at 6 p.m. So if you're on council, please be aware of that. Um, I also want to remind our confirmation students that this Wednesday we'll have confirmation, of course, on Zoom at 6 p.m. Keep an eye out for that link. Um, we also want to say a, a few prayers this time of year for all those people that are struggling, of course, um, 
we will be having a blue Christmas service that will be posted on the 20th. So if you're having a hard time, please check out our website and our uh, Facebook page. Those will be posted. If you just need a little, a little time to reflect, maybe to mourn or to hear a different theme, recognizing that God is even with those people who struggle during what is normally a blessed season. Um, there's an opportunity for you there. That, of course, is an ecumenical service that we've done with our regular partners. I um, also want to pray for all those people who are carrying parcels this time of year. I heard that there are three times as many packages being delivered this year as there were last year. Um, of course, we're all staying home, and those people are on the front line. So um, somebody mentioned, I think this was you, Patty, that we should just leave a light on for them, maybe a little later than we normally would, so that they can get where they need to go safely and be supported, because... In many ways, they're keeping us all united in ways that we wouldn't be otherwise. So thankful, we're thankful for them. Um, I also want to pray for all those people struggling with illness. I've heard of a few folks um, who are starting to get COVID, either in uh, care facilities, at home, in families. Uh, it is definitely out there, and our prayers go out to them that they are safe and that they recover well. Um, all right, let's continue now with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now for our final blessing. Let us bless our God, praise and thanks to you. May God Creator bless us and keep us. May Christ be kept our guide through our lives. May the Spirit of love be our guide and path through all of our days. He came down. Go in peace, Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.